Hello students, in this video I want to bring together the concepts of subspace, linear independence, linear dependence, and linear combination. I want to tie all of it together and give you a geometric and algorithmic example to tie together all these concepts. So what I have here are three vectors. You can see them u, v, and w. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write W here as a linear combination of U and V. Now you might have seen this uh, type of thing before in uh, previous videos that I have done. So I'm assuming that you understand or you've seen those examples in previous problems. Okay, again, this is a summary. I'm trying to tie all this together. Now what we did there was we solved this system of equations. We thought of this linear combination here with these parentheses designating the unknowns. We thought of this as, as a system of equations and we wrote it, wrote it as an augmented system. Then we did, we've done the row reduction and we solved the system and we see that x2 is 5 fourths. You do get a unique solution. And x1 turns out to be minus 7 fourths. So minus 7 fourths times the first vector plus 5 fourths times the second vector gives us this third vector here. So minus 7 fourths u plus 5 fourths v is equal to w. So w can be written as a linear combination of u and v. And so that means that w is in the span of u and v. So let's tie this now to a subspace. If I think of these vectors as living in a subspace, let's say W of R3. Now what does W look like? Well, it's all the set of points that satisfy this relationship. 2x minus y plus 3 is equal 0. Let me show you a picture of that. W is this green plane in R3. R3 is a three-dimensional coordinate system here. U and V are these red vectors. There's, there's u and v. w is the blue vector. Now notice that since the blue and red vectors all live on this plane, they all sit in this plane, we could write this blue vector as a linear combination of these two red vectors. And yes, you could, you know, reverse and say, well, can I write this red vector here as a linear combination of these two vectors, this red and blue vector? And the answer is yes, you can do all that. I'm just focusing on writing the blue vector as the linear combination of the two vectors there. So these vectors live in this subspace. They live on this plane. This plane is a subspace of R3. It's a two-dimensional um, subspace. So um, here's my little schematic. So I have the two red vectors, and then I had that third vector, w, there. And what we did is we rescaled the vectors. So we changed the direction of one vector, rescaled it, rescaled the other vector, and we used the parallelogram law and showed how if we just multiply this vector, change its direction, and rescale it. So you're just multiplying it by a scalar. You can't rotate it. You can't lift it off the plane. It has to still stay on the plane. So the only thing you can do is multiply it by a number. Same thing with this vector. The only thing you can do is multiply it by a number. Then, just like solving systems of equations, the geometric interpretation there is that you can now create a parallelogram that this vector is a diagonal of the parallelogram whose sides <clears throat> are the rescaled vectors here. So the parallelogram holds in this plane, and W is a subspace of R3. So that's what it means to be in the span. It just means that this vector can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. And for these vectors to live in a subspace just means that they all live in this plane, <clears throat> and they can be written as linear combinations of one another. Now let's push that concept a little bit further. <clears throat> these vectors, U and V, are independent. <clears throat> you can check that by writing this linear combination. So I have C1 times U plus C2 times V is equal to zero, and if the only solution to this 
system of equations is c1 is 0 and c2 is 0, then these vectors are linearly independent. So I write this set of equations here as a matrix equation, and I write that as an augmented matrix. I do the row reduction, same row reduction I did up here, except I have 0 on the right-hand side. And then we see that c1 and c2 both equal to 0 is the unique solution to this system. And so that means 0, c1 equals c2 equals 0 is the only solution that satisfies this system of equations. So by definition, that makes these vectors independent of one another. What that means, let's go back to the geometric interpretation, that means that while these vectors do live on the same plane, so in R3, they're dependent. Okay, so that's the subtlety you have to be careful of. In R2, in this subspace, W, they are independent. So vectors can be independent in a subspace, but dependent in the full vector space. So be careful of that. So see how they're, they're independent because they're, they, can form this par they can form a parallelogram in the plane, but they're dependent because they live on the same plane in R3. So they're independent in W, but dependent in R3. But they can form a basis. Because they're independent, they form a basis for W. And so that means that any vector, not just the vector minus 3, 0, 2, but any vector in this plane can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. That means we can always change the direction and rescale these vectors to create a parallelogram that makes any vector in this plane the diagonal of that parallelogram. All right. Now, what about, um, let's go back to that idea of these vectors being dependent. So if I put all three of these vectors together, it turns out that they are dependent. They lie in the same plane. And that means that they, are, they can all be written as linear combinations of one another within this plane if I put all of them together. And any other vector in R3 that is not on this plane cannot be written as a linear combination of these vectors. So this purple vector here, for example, cannot be written as a linear combination of, the, of any of these vectors, any combinations of these vectors. You might say, oh, well, can't I rotate this vector up? Okay, you can't do a rotation. You can only multiply it by a number. That means you can only extend it in the plane or you can only change its direction and extend it or contract it. So this, vec this purple vector shows us that these vectors cannot form a basis for R3. They can only form a basis for R2. And in that respect, only two of them can form a basis for, R for W. Okay? I keep saying R2, I mean W. All right, so um, that's a summary bringing together the ideas of span, subspace, independent, and dependent. And to give you an example of the subtleties here, that vectors can be independent in a subspace, but dependent in the full vector space. So I want you to be careful of those concepts, and I'm trying to you know, broaden your horizons a little bit here. All right, good luck.